Hey guys, so today's video is about a profilometer. And if you guys don't know what a profilometer is, basically it is a precision measuring tool for checking, um, well, it's not for just checking cylinder bores, but cylinder finishes, um, deck finishes, head finishes. Now, I did have an older, an older unit that we used to use um, to kind of perfect our honing procedure. Um, but I've now decided um, some, a friend of mine wanted to buy the old one. So I figured, well, I'll buy a new one. So I talked to the boys over at uh, Total Seal and Total Seal. I guess you can't really see the, ah, Total Seal, Total Seal. Um, and got myself a new profilometer and also this holder gauge that I did not have before from these guys and it is mint. I like it anyway, whoops, as I smash it. Anyways, the nice thing about this is that one, it has this piece so you can actually hold it in the bore. And then also two, this plate that it sits in. Uh, here, let me just set that down. This thing is pretty, you gotta be careful with this thing. And this thing is not cheap. Is there's a groove inside here for the stylist on the very end of this doesn't get screwed up. So, because this, this looking here for me um, was pretty close to $5,000 Canadian. These things are not cheap. So you want to make sure you're not damaging it, wrecking it, blah, blah, blah. So what I wanted to show was just kind of a general quick, I'm just, I'm, I'm changing the way that we hone um, and doing our, because I'm going to change over to using Total Seal rings on everything. And they want a little bit different cylinder finish than um, other manufacturers. So I've been kind of messing around. I had to buy um, new, uh, a couple sets of new diamonds, uh, a set of CBNs, which is, Basically what I'm talking about is this is a, this piece in here, this cutter is actually diamond. And then the CBNs, which look similar to that, are that. But basically this is what you use to take the material out after we bore it to a certain size. And then you use this to plateau finish it. And how we used to do it was we would use, um, well, we will still be doing it, just not on the ones that I'm doing right now. Um, we would use a, a finer grits uh, diamond and then we would finish it with a brush. You can't really see the brush very well. Hold on, I got a new set right here. So this is the brush, just to give you guys an idea. And then this is the, this is a junk set that we use, but one that got crashed and you can see there was a chunk missing off, so we don't use it anymore. But we do sometimes for doing roughing. That's Hopefully you guys can see that maybe a little bit better, but I just wanted to talk a little bit more about it because the cylinder finish and stuff, a lot of that is kind of, I don't know what the word for it would be. It's kind of uh, an unknown thing. So now that I have this new one, I kind of wanted, I wanted to show some of the process of using it. And also I'm going to do some videos of uh, doing like a three stone hone, doing a ball hone and showing the cylinder finishes difference. Just so, and some of that stuff, I honestly, I never did it with my old one because I just, like I have the equipment. So why am I going to do that? So I'm going to do some videos talking about that to show you the different grits and blah, blah, blah. And also I'm hoping that potentially we'll see, I don't know, is if, um, well, Hold on, I'll show you what I mean by a ball hone for you guys that don't know. Most of you probably know what a ball hone is. This is a ball hone. And sometimes what we, we, what we use them for sometimes is we'll stuff it down in the board just to clean up if there's, if we're not, um, if we're not boring it first, because some things you can't bore if you're only taking, let's say 10 thou out or just a couple thou. What we do is we use this to deglaze the cylinder to knock off that shininess before we put the diamond in. And the only reason that, we, that I found doing that makes a little bit of a difference is that it doesn't seem to leave a deposit on the stone. Or it's not a stone, the diamond. And then also, too, sometimes we'll, we'll use these for, too, as well. If you have um, a main bore that has, like, a funny finish on it or something like that, or, like, on cam bores sometimes, they have, like, a weird, like, a glazed finish on it. I have a bunch of different sizes of these. Sometimes we'll just quickly on each one of those um, and just put a little bit of a something like a an etch for the bearing to hold on to. so um, I guess what I'll do is I'll show you guys 
Um, just putting it in one cylinder here and I'll show you guys what the deal is. So this thing, these things come pre-set up. I don't know if they all do, mine was pre-set up. Um, but you do still have to, this is a set, this is a, um, a precision setting piece. So basically, you know what the finish on this is. It's actually like a precision thing. And you can see the, see where it's like the blue. So every once in a while, you're supposed to check it to make sure that everything is good. We'll just put that back on because we don't want to get that damaged. But imagine that probably ain't cheap. So we're going to take this, I'm going to set it up in there, and then we're going to do a measurement. And like I said, the, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what the numbers mean as well. Not that I'm a super expert on it, but I'm hoping, I shouldn't say hoping, we will be doing some videos on, on more videos on doing it um, with the guys at Total Seal. Um, I've reached out to them and they said that they would, they would um, do some videos. I don't think they'll be in-person videos. They're from the States, being made for, I'm from Canada. If I go down there, So, and I was monkeying around with this block. That's why you can see the wear marks in there. Just kind of playing around with the surface finish thing. I do need to get a some sort of a cart or something for this to sit on. Being that I paid as much as I did for it, I do not want to damage it. So basically just tighten that in there, get it straight on the bore. Okay, so we got that fixed in there now. I'm going to hit it, get it to test again. You can see it measuring. I want to make sure you get that thing straight in there too, because it'll throw your numbers off if you don't get it straight. Sometimes you want to test it once or if you... If you're all getting numbers and then you get one that's wonky, then you know that you got something screwed up as far as that goes, right? And there we go. That's what we have for a surface finish, which is not exactly what we want. The R, um, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the RK up a little higher and then the RPK um is a little bit uh pretty close it's just a touch low and then the r the rvk is actually roughly where i want it ah it would be nice to be a little bit higher than that too but it's it's close anyways so basically hold on let me take this out of here and i will go over there and we'll talk just quickly about what these numbers mean all right guys i wanted to talk a little bit about what these numbers mean so for you guys that aren't engine builders, obviously, you probably don't have any idea what this stuff is. And some engine builders don't, is what it is. Um, and don't get me wrong, years ago, this wasn't really a thing. Um, usually, years ago, what we would check was RA, which is an average of the surface finish. And that's still like, if you're talking like the cylinder fin or the, the deck surface of a block or a head or something, we still measure that in an RA most of the time. But the problem with an RA is that it can be, it can be a skewed number. It gives you an idea, but it's not exactly what you're after. Anyways, we won't get into that right now. So for cylinder finish, um, basically this is just a dumbed down version. Hopefully one day I'll be able to do um, some more in depth videos. It's just that I would like to have, um, I'd really like to be able to do some with Total Seal, maybe one day. Um, you know, I'll probably have to go down there because I don't think they come to Canada too often. But if I could go down there, maybe do a tour of Total Seal, I think that'd be pretty cool if I can video that, that type of stuff. Anyways, um, that's, the, that's my idea. So, but we're going to give a quick rundown of this. So basically, if you look at the inside of a cylinder, you do not want it perfectly smooth, but you also don't want it too rough. So basically, if you take, like when, you, when we're, we hone it and you get a cross hatch, basically the cross hatch is comprised of peaks, which are here, and then valleys, which are down here. So what you want is you need valleys. These valleys here hold oil. Without the oil, uh, your rings don't last. Or the deeper the valley to a certain point, there is different rings need different valleys and peaks and all that type of stuff. So there again, we won't get into that. We're just trying to keep it pretty simple here to start with. So 
basically when we're, we're measuring this stuff, we want to know the peak height, the valley, right? So your, R, your RVK is the depth of the valley. And this is coming off a center line too. So they're usually on the, the meter, there's a center line in there. So your, the depth of your valley, and then your RPK, which is the peak height, which is from here to here. And for the most part, what you, and then RK is the average between these two. So this is the average between these two. And yes, you wanna know that, but these two numbers are more important than this number, but you need this number within a certain range because you can have these ones screwed up to the point where this one's out of range and it hurts you. So basically when we're honing, we're, at, we le we're left with this, basically, this hole. So center line and then really deep valleys and then really pointy peaks. And you don't want really pointy peaks because that's hard on piston rings. So if when we finish it with a diamond stone, basically, or yeah, we finish it with a diamond stone because it doesn't matter which process we're using. Whether we're using a brush or a CBN, basically what we're doing is we're trying to knock the top of these peaks off. So basically when we're done, uh, let, me get a, let me get the brush here and we'll just take this off. Just take this out of here. Basically what we're trying to do is have, because that's, I did that and I made it pretty close to the same and that usually is not the way that it is. So lots of times what you'll have is you'll have this one will be this high, this one will be this high, this one will be this high, this, is, this one will be this high. This one would be this high, this one would be this high. And they're pointy. They're like pointy, pointy like that, right? So that's kind of the idea. And you're talking, this is over a very, very, very small, this is in micro inches. So basically what you want to do is you go into it with a plateau and you plateau these off flat. So basically, if you take the eraser, do the same idea, basically is what we're trying to do is that. So you still have a peak now we're not knocking this much off of it just for demonstration purposes you knock the top of them off and you still want to peak so this is your center line you still want to peak there but you don't want the peak as tall and you want this your rvk which is your valley to be able to hold oil so this has to retain and this has to retain and then so basically kind of this across here, the flatter this, the I shouldn't say the flatter, the straighter this is, um, the better your ring seal is and all that stuff, but you have to have these other numbers all in check for it to work. So this is something you can ask your engine shop. Not all engine shops are gonna have the equipment to, to measure it. Most of them nowadays will, especially if you're doing performance stuff, most of them will have this. So if you ever hear me talking about RBK, RPK, or RK, that's what I'm talking about, or even RA, um, which is, like I said, more talking about cylinder or uh, deck surfaces and, and block surfaces. Um, you could even do it on manifolds and stuff like that, I suppose. And then also you can do this exact same measurement on crankshafts as well. Um, there is a different um, fixture. It's actually a different tool, but a similar kind of idea for doing crankshafts. I've personally never used one of those. I've seen pictures of them, but um, anyways, this is, um, you know, like, kind of the dumbed down version of it. There's a lot of information, There's a lot of information about this stuff I don't know. Um, I'm just privy to be able to talk to some of the guys in the industry, um, Total Seal and all that, those type of guys. Um, there's uh, Lake Speed and Keith Jones are two of the main guys that I've talked to. Um, and we will be doing, definitely we'll be doing some videos with Lake Speed. I've talked to him about that, about, um, he's a, well, he, he's actually a super knowledgeable guy. But he um, is, by trade, I guess, is an oil analysis, or not an oil analysis, he's a, hmm, what is he? He's an oil, he's an oil guy, anyways. Originally, was where he came from. He actually had a lot to do with, if you guys have ever heard driven oil, he had a lot to do with um, the formulations for driven oil. Um, you know, like making all the, 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 the ones when he worked there, because he did work there, now he works at Tulsa. So... Um, hopefully this kind of, for you guys that are watching the video, kind of gives you an idea if you already didn't know. If you have ideas for me to do videos that are talking about this type of stuff, let me know. I will do a video on um, RA, talking about um, deck finishes and head finishes, just because we might as well. Might as well do some videos. I got a, a few video ideas talking about this type of stuff. I figured I, I have the equipment, um, we might as well show you. So. 
Like, subscribe, and hit me down in the comments. And remember, it's not rocket science.